Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. I'm trying not to freak out. (laughs) I'm really trying not to freak out, but welcome to The Preventable. Uh, Yes, this is sponsored by Hubbard. Super exciting. Thank you for, thank you, Hale Hubbard, all those things. But I'm going to cut to the chase because... I kind of peed my pants when I found out that this person sitting across from me had agreed to do this. Um, With me is the one and the only Steve Ewing. Well, hello. How you doing? (laughs) Okay, so I'm sorry that I'm fangirling and I'm really trying hard not to, but I was a wannabe ska kid. I say wannabe because I was not very cool. But with ska... It was okay to not be cool because you could skank, which is, right? And, like, I didn't go to parties when I was in high school. I went to concerts. and which is cool. Which is cool. I mean, I was the least cool person in that room, but it was so cool. seriously cool, cool, yeah. But it was cool. So um, when your friend Gary, a.k.a. the Mountain Man, set us up i seriously peed my pants and called like every person that i knew so thank you for agreeing to be here yeah you got it thanks for having me on here um do you do you get tired of this reception i love it really i love it yeah yeah i mean i've been doing music now for 35 years and i don't get tired of it i love it i still perform a lot so i still like performing for people and i like getting people excited so i love it I love watching you perform on like a big stage, mm-hmm. but I also really, I mean, I used to live in Tower Grove East, mm-hmm. which is where Steve's Hot Dogs was until you moved. Sad, but, <laughs> but Buzz's is there now and they're great. Right. But, um, and at one point you closed down the street. It was like kind of during COVID. Yeah, we did that uh, six feet of party. That's six feet of party. That's yep. right. And we walked up, we sat there and you, and it wasn't like, acapella but it was very stripped down like it was it was my duo it was just me and a guitarist yes yep. yes do you have a preference if you do like kind of a big thing like your you know like riz's birthday party like a or riverport like yes i just said riverport like right, do you like doing I, those I it. or do I, you I like really, doing the smaller i can't say that i necessarily have a preference um i do a lot with my duo like a ton actually um, and we can go into pretty much any venue. We can do big stuff with that duo or small stuff. Um, and we can do a lot of different music. Yeah, so it's probably more like versatility so or whatever. it's way versatile, and I have so much fun with it. Um, on the other hand, like with The Urge, I love playing the big shows with The Urge just because of all that excitement. Mm-hmm. And people get all riled up about all the old songs, you know. So we'll play stuff that's, you know, 25, 30 years old, and people get really excited about so those performances are way fun it's just different it's different i can't say that like i say one is better than the other i but i do have to approach them oh i'm sure totally different differently right yeah because for on a big stage you know people are further away from you so you, you're not communicating the same way yeah i'm not actually looking someone right in the eye or whatever they're usually far away so i'm communicating more to like Hey y'all! Like more of a big thing instead of like in a small show. Right. I'm literally actually like right in front of people, so I'm kind of interacting yeah, with them. Yeah, like I that. like almost and and this at the six feet of party. There was a woman that I met who said she has seen you over forty five times. Sweet. And um, had a t shirt on, whatever, and and felt feels as though you are like, of like you know her. Like, yeah. and so I wonder, like, how does that, like, does that fame mess with your brain? It does not seem like it does. You seem no. like a very, like, down to earth human being, but that would kind of freak me out a little bit, but it doesn't seem to freak no, you out. No, um, not, not at this point. I mean, that's part of what helped us get along, move along, um, in the game is actually hanging out with people and, um, being around people, being around the fans. So because it was a hard, it wasn't say like a crazy hard road, but it was, it was work. So you get done playing a show, you can hang out with people. You kind of get a feel for what it is that they like. Yes. Um, yeah. Just, people who are your fans, like do feel 
probably intentionally, like they know you. Yes, because it probably, you know, in a small setting, I probably have talked to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. I probably true. have actually had a conversation with them. But yes, that's, I, I do get out and try to try to like talk as much as I can because I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so the the recognition kind of thing, whatever, it doesn't creep me out. Um, unless you're like, you know, stalker type. Oh yeah, that's you know, a like, problem. Right. That's you know, a, that's a problem. Different so, people, but yeah. <laughs> so when you, I mean, I, I, there, I was trying to like do a little bit of preparation for this and there was like 14,000 different questions I wanted to ask as a sure. fan, but I'm trying to like keep it like focused on my, you know, my day job. <laughs> and so one question I think that I have is that, you know, you are, Sort of, I mean, you have your hands in a lot, mm-hmm. right? So you have the urge, you have the duo, you have the hot dog business, you and your business partner, I think, are doing a few other things as Correct. well. Yep. So you seem to realize that music was isn't like the only thing, like that there are other other parts of the business that maybe you use music to get into sure. or like, yeah. Big Do you time. know what I mean? Like, how did you evolve from being like a musician to then also adding to your like repertoire? Um, well, that's a good question because um, I moved out to LA. My wife and I moved out there in '99, and then we stayed out there until she got pregnant, which was '06. Moved back to St. Louis, and I was performing a lot. The urge was doing was kind of back together doing stuff. Um, we were doing some small tours, and then the Steve Ewing duo and the band, um, we were actually doing some more touring. So I was playing a lot, and I was just looking for a way to back off from touring. Because mm-hmm. you've got a wife and kid. And, right. Yep. So let me back off a little bit, and then start another little side business that you know I can kind of get going or whatever, or maybe just like... I can maybe have some balance between the two. Mm-hmm. So I started doing the hot dog thing um, as a way to just kind of get some food out to people around concert venues. That was the, that was kind of the idea. Mm. Um, I quickly learned that that's kind of hit and miss. So um, so I got the brick and mortar over on the hill. That was my first spot. Mm-hmm. Like, let me give you the run and see how this goes. And it took off really fast. Within a year, it took off. And we were, and I was able to use um music and notoriety yep. and that familiarity um especially with social media being i won't say a new platform but a really robust platform that was really like free at the time exactly yep um to to get the business off the ground so yeah big time well and i mean first of all your hot dogs are good i mean i'm a vegetarian so i can't speak to the full experience but i appreciate <laughs> right, that right. if i go in and i get a hot dog like it doesn't feel like one of those terrible rubbery hot dogs no, that it's you not get that, it's yeah. not that it's not and that. and <laughs> mac and cheese is good like I, I could keep going on but during covid i mean you really fed the masses for lack of a better word. Yep. I mean, were you just like, I've got to do something and this is what I can do? Yep. So it became apparent like right away. Um, and my wife's a teacher. and so oh, we, I didn't know that. Yeah, what grade she, does she teach? Well, she's a speech therapist. She's a huh. speech teacher. So she's cool. usually K through five. Yep. Okay. Um, early development. I'm middle school. Oh, right mm-hmm. on, right yeah. on. Yeah. Yep. So we knew right away like... If they're going to shut schools down, yes, we knew that it was going to be a whole bunch of people who weren't going to get meals that they would normally get. Correct. Like for breakfast From and lunch, for lunch. The free and like, reduced yep. lunch. Yep. So um, th- that was the first thought is just how can we help uh, fill that gap like while, you know, while schools are being shut down. So we did that and then it, it kind of evolved into, you know, a lot of people started losing their jobs. No one had work. So... People who didn't have money. Right. So we're like, you know what? Just come in here, get some food. No questions asked. We'll make you a sack. Um, and it, it kind of blew up from there. And um, then we were like, well, okay, we're, we need help here. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, so we put together the Feed the People thing, which allowed some people to donate mm-hmm. so we could keep making the food. Um, and then we also got a few other partners that, would actually, that could come help pick up the food and make deliveries. For us, so we were doing probably like a few hundred dogs 
like every couple of days, whatever, on our own or whatever. And then Salvation Army and St. Patrick's Center and yep. a few others will come and actually help us get food out. And so at this point, we're, I think we're close to like 10,000 meals would feed the people. So, which yeah. is just, I mean, it's really incredible. And you were a business, correct me if I'm wrong, that really grew during the pandemic. We did. Which is not necessarily the case for a lot of other restaurants in St. Louis or in other places. Yeah, it was. But it was um, like the ones who could pivot to what you're describing. Yep. Did seem to make it through and really thrive. Yep. So it was it was extremely tough, um, for a lot of reasons, but with a lot of restaurants not being able to be open, and small ones like us. That we could be open, we were calling it. They were calling us essential, or whatever. So yes. we, we weren't doing. We didn't have a dining room. We didn't have all that. So you could do like delivery and mm. curbside. So we decided to stay open, and it was really just me, um, and two other people, because we couldn't hire anybody. Right. We couldn't. Right. So we'd like, well, we'll we'll do this, um, as long as we can, <laughs> and <laughs> it was. It was like I said, it was three of us working around the clock. So we were really busy, crazy busy, but it was it was only a handful of us actually doing the work. Mm. Um, so I'm like, if we can get through this, we can figure out all this new technology because we got slammed with new tech, right? Like stuff that we were planning on doing like five years down the line. Right. We like the ordering online, like all, all that, that online kind of stuff. stuff. Yeah. We had to do it like now. So we had to figure all that out. And that's my, luckily, my business partners are really good at that. But I mean, if we can survive this, we can do this. I think we'll we'll be all right moving out of it, and we have been. So yeah, I I mean it was something that my staff were so tired of hearing me say. I know that they were because I was tired of hearing me say it. But it's like there are no answers. We are all like building the plane literally as we oh, are yeah, flying. We, we were like, like day there's to day, no... every single day there was there was a new challenge, either tech wise or. What what the city was allowing us to right, do? Right, sure, like, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm wondering, you know, between the your feed the people initiative, between I mean, you do a lot of profit shares, mm-hmm. um, which is what I call them. Do you, is that what you call them? Yeah. Okay. Where or you know, like like we, a third we call them fundraisers, fundraisers. Or whatever, but we end up sure. sharing the profit. Yeah. Yeah. So like we had one where I you know dresses in a hot dog costume, where uh, we had you know if you brought the flyer in or mentioned our name or whatever, a certain percentage came back to us. Right. Have you always like been sort of um, philanthropically minded? Because it's not necessarily like a f- most people's first reaction to go oh. A pandemic is hitting. We don't know what's happening. Let me figure out how I can utilize my resources and feed a bunch of people. Like, yeah. that's not exactly where most people's brains would go. My, I've had three shops, and all of them are in small neighborhoods. So you're on street corners, literally in the neighborhood, so you get to know everyone. Mm-hmm. So you're actually a part of the community right away. Like, just by opening your restaurant, you become part of the community. So, um, so those are your people. And you get to meet everyone like really fast, whatever. So when something happens, if you can, you try to make a contribution mm-hmm. or you try to do what you can. Mm-hmm. And there's always going to be a need. And um, the one thing we can do is feed people. So we can we can feed people. So, yeah. Yeah. Are you teaching your, your kid that, I'm assuming? She helps, yeah. So she helped all through the pandemic, which was great because she kind of get get to, get to see some things, get hands on. Yep. Um. And I think it's important for kids to do that. I did that with my dad I back know. in the day. I, so. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Like, I you just do it. You yep. just have to go out and do it. I mean, I would also go to work every day. What, like, not every day, but on Saturdays, I'd go to work with my dad. And he mm-hmm. would, you know, put me to work or yep. go to work with my... I think it's important. It's way important, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, so we did quite a bit of that um, through the through the shutdown. Um, we were at the pantries a lot. Whatever, I just took her with me and she helped out and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think it's a stretch to say that the music industry can be a little tough to navigate, um, particularly when it comes to substances and, you know, there's a lot of pressure to perform and sure. to make money and to do all these things. And when I've had other people in the music industry on the podcast, we've talked a little bit about 
substance use in the music industry mm-hmm. and how it is really hard to come out unscathed, but that now there does seem to be a different, I don't know, clear like vulnerability that musicians have in well, able to talk about that. What do I you can, think? From from how I see it, the urge has always been drug free. That it was in the charter, actually. Tell, like, what? Tell it's, me it's this. In the, what? It's in the band charter. So like any major like drug use or anything like that, or whatever, there's cause for you to be removed from the band. Shut up. Yeah. I did it. So was we, this something you all decided or was this like your manager helped you? No, we decided that because Car- me and Carl, who are the original members of the band, we've never really been into drugs, whatever. So, I mean, aside from drinking and, you know, um, and, you know, smoking marijuana. Sure, whatever, but, sure, sure. And like, even then, it's like nothing crazy. But so, but for us, it was like heroin, cocaine, things like that. We've had members who've done that or whatever, and we saw how it just, it doesn't usually end well. Right, it kind right. Of, just when things are happening or like something really cool is going to happen, heroin gets in the way. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so like we don't want to deal with that. So that, that's been our thing. So it was in your band's charter. It's in the charter, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, because we had dealt with it before. And so yeah. we're just like, well, we don't, as things progress, we, it's something we just don't want to deal with, you know. Well, I mean, anybody who's watched like behind the music, <laughs> like yeah. knows that there are so many different examples of bands that it's exactly what you said. Yeah. Like they're on a precipice, and then something really killer's about to happen, mm-hmm. and somebody. Yeah. So, have you always been into physical health as well? Because Me? Yes. yes, yes. So, I mean, I know. I mean, this might be weird to say, but I know you've always been kind of like ripped. But then there's like that, and then you're like doing competitions. Yeah, so fitness has always been a part of my life, period. Um, just because I, I was a high school athlete um, all the way through, and then um, it kind of just translated to our show. It's a high-energy show. Well, we right, you kind of have to be yep. physically fit so in order to have the stamina. some kind of physical condition to even do the show. Mm. Um, and then, you know, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to be um, to aesthetically look good sure as a right. musician as yes, a performer it does, it so, does not hurt right so it's uh so it's always kind of been there uh, so how'd for me. you get into competitions that you, do you still do it um not this year but for the past four years i've competed so um i took a break this year because yeah, I, mean, I just got busy with everything right, else but right. um a friend of mine who's an ex who is a firefighter now um I, who i saw in the gym every day does it a lot and he's really good and and he's like you can do that i'm like man i've always thought about it but i don't think i can do that and he's like no you can do that so he talked me into it and i did it and it was, and i loved it and it was amazing i had a great time so yeah i bet it's just like a huge like dopamine <sighs> adrenaline rush yes. right yes. like similar to when you're on stage because you're on stage but a different kind of stage it is especially the first couple couple times you do it because you're out of your comfort zone, so yeah, it's it's almost like terrifying. And, oh yeah, right. I'm sure <laughs> and exciting at the same. I mean, it is terrifying, <laughs> but um, but it's exciting at the same time. Yeah. Wow. So has fitness always been sort of like a like a release for you, or it's, like a like catharsis, or? Yep. It, it's a go to for everything for me. Like if I'm stressed out, um, I know I can you know get in a quickie or. Do you even take on a walk or something? You know what and I mean? by like, quickie, you mean workout? Yep. Okay, just yeah. making sure. I'm sorry, <laughs> yes, I'm just yes. just making yes. sure our listeners know that, what you're that's talking what that about. Means, yes. Okay, yes. Okay. And okay. during like stressful times, like you know, during a restaurant opening, yeah, where everything is literally just hanging in the air, right? Um, that keeps you grounded. That keeps you straight. Are there other things you do to kind of keep yourself like focused? Because you strike me. I don't really know you, but you strike me as a very focused person. I can be. <laughs> I can be focused, and I can also be very unfocused. Got it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I, I can be focused, especially, like, say, like I said, we have a restaurant opening. Um, I have a massive task, like, you know, hundreds of tasks to do. I must stay focused to get that done because I also have a deadline. Yes. Because um, we have to get the doors open at a certain time. So then... I'm forced into being focused, you know, so 
Um, but yes, but then other times, you know, like I can be, I can be a procrastinator and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But to me, fitness is remains the same no matter what. Mm. It's always there. It's always the same. So I can go get up in the morning and go do that. I know that's going to be there. I know it's going to like smooth my day out for the most part, like right off the bat. How much does music play a role in helping you kind of stay focused? Well, that's my job. So, I mean, or my other job. So um, I guess that's true. <laughs> like, is it, is it fun? Yes. Okay. It's the best job, yeah. And do you listen to music to help you unwind? Do you? Like, I'm not asking if you listen to your own music. I'm asking, right. like, do you... Because music for me is is huge, right? Yep. But I also... It's not tied to my job. Right. So, music is kind of part of everything. So, I wouldn't say I listen to music to unwind. I just always have some music going. It's just part of you. It's just always there. So, I mean, it's... Even if you don't realize it, there's always some music happening most of the time in your life during the day. Somebody's playing music someplace. So it's always there. Like if I'm exercising, I always have music on. Um, so, yeah, so music is definitely, I mean, besides performing it, it's there. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned that you have a restaurant opening. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to, like, talk any more about that? It's very sure. exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. Anything else coming up that you want to, like, promote? So, well, we do have another Steve's Hot Dogs coming um, next March. And it's going to be on Del Mar, uh, right between Union and Kings Highway. So next door to Third Degree Glass Factory. Love it. Love it. And so kind of right by the Maid Maker Space. Right that across the whole street. Deal. Yep. So that's called the Maker's District. And so everything, it's, we're going to be one of the first major developments for mm. that. So it'll be the Steve's Hot Dogs, uh, the um, Fountain on Locust. Love it. We'll have uh, their second location, the Fountain off Locust there. And then Alpha Brewing will have their distillery. There, Got so, it. Yeah. So that's, that'll be brand new construction, which they've start, they started digging like last month. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. That's exciting. It's crazy yeah. and it's exciting. Yeah. Um, you know... Putting in investing in that area of Del Mar mm -hmm. is um, some might say it's risky, some might say it's brave. What yeah. do you say it is? Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of community behind there. Yes. So you have that's considered the Central West End, I guess, and then you have development on the north side, and then you have the whole north side of the neighborhood. So the tr what they're trying to do in that area is try to bring all those different sides together. And there's plenty of people over there. Plenty. Um, we have, like, unlike um, our other city locations where we park on the street, there's no parking lots. This one will actually have a parking lot. Oh, no way. Cool. Yeah. So, that's cool. Um, I, I know that's a big thing for people who come into the city. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with Steve's Hot Dogs, we've always had to make ourselves a destination. Um we don't always come at the top of people's heads when it comes to dining all the time. Right, so right. We're we're a destination if you're coming to the city. Like, oh, we got to go try Steve's hot dog. So yes, the idea is to get people to come. You know, no matter where you're, you know, at, come in, see Steve's hot dogs, and you know, so that's what we've always had to do. Well, and they've certainly been doing a lot of work in that area of of Del Mar because, as you know, it's it's often called. There's the Del Mar Divide there, and yeah. so how do you take what's happening in like Joe Edwards's part of Del Mar and like extend it north? Yeah, and you know, made a certainly one, and then you know there there's a new coffee shop and and things I like think, that. This um, is going to be huge. I think this is going to be big. The coffee shop is already doing amazing. It every time I drive by yeah. it is like packed. It's already doing amazing. This craft alliance is right there. Yes. It's made across the street. Um the um Magic House, mm. which is they're all part of kind yeah, of the yeah, same yeah. thing. So they're just kind of And now there's gonna be food. There's gonna be food there's gonna be a massive development with food and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it'll take up that you know that building used to be a car wash? Yes. That entire area. Wow. Um, will be developed and then across the street will also be developed that strip mall over there will eventually be redeveloped and so all all the way from union all the way down to king's highway will be re redeveloped so it'll service both sides of del mar of course and then um even people coming that are east of that 
in the Central West End also can come this way. Yeah, it'll be nice to have people from fancy Central West End, you know, like to come down. Then you've got people from all angles. You have parking, but I'm sure there will also be a decent amount of people who will be walking. And this is like food. Like it's not, I mean, this is, and and drinks, but like actual food. It'll be food, Not fast food, like food. Correct. Really, really great. Yeah, the, the designers um, specifically wanted it to be walkable. So, in other words, yes, um, it'll be a massive outdoor space. Where, you know, with um, where you can have your dogs and families and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But the development comes to right up to the street, so it's it's not off the street. It's right up on the street, so you everyone can kind of interact with and it. Welcoming and inviting. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and and it seems to me like when I've been to your new location on Grand, you know, you have the comedy nights and you utilize the outdoor space for concerts and things like that. It's a very, and I know this word is overly used, but it's a very inclusive space. Like mm-hmm. you usually have lots of generations, lots of, you know, uh, demographics. Sure. And one thing that we appreciate at Prevented is that you also accommodate the non-alcoholic demographic. And yep. you have a pretty robust yep. NA beverage menu. Yeah, which is Was awesome. that intentional? Like talk a little bit about that. Yes, because I don't always drink. So it's, sometimes I well, will Well, especially order. not if you're like If I'm training, then I don't comp- drink. Yeah. Competition. Yeah, so yeah. It's, socially, it's nice to be able to just order an NA someplace. Yes. If you're out and about. Um, so we had some of the, like, the stuff that you would just get from the distributor. Like mm-hmm. some AB has some products. Yes. Um, and then a whole host of NA products started coming out. They were actually really tasty. Really good. Um, so like, so we're like, yeah, we'll take all of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 With our Sands bar, which is kind of a, it's like mobile mixology, kind of a pop-up thing. We really try to do two things. Number one, help people understand that there's a lot more reasons that people don't drink just re- in addition to like they're sober, right? right. Like or they're whether recovering, or, or yeah. recovering, right? They've got fitness competitions. They mm-hmm. have health reasons, cultural reasons. They're pregnant. Who knows? Like, what, or they just don't feel like you're, drinking. You're Hello. exactly right. There's yes, there's a million many different reasons. reasons why you wouldn't want to have a drink on this particular night. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice that restaurants now, including yours, mm-hmm. are understanding that people want choice, mm-hmm. and whether they want an you know an AB like a near beer type of thing, or if they want like a handcrafted cocktail like they want to be able to have a choice and want to feel as though they're being paid attention to just as much as the person who's going to be ordering a high quality like craft beer at alpha which you know i'm not in long-term recovery alpha has great beer and i might not always want to drink so it's nice to have options yep so did for that for you was it a business decision or was it more of like a personal decision or were you just like why not it was like well I I um I enjoy having an NA sometimes. Um, my partners do, so I just think of and the fact that we can get this good the stuff to taste good. Yeah, it's like why why would we not do this? Why would we not? Why do we want to say no or not have something that we could provide someone? Same with same with having the vegan menu or right. You know all that kind yes. of stuff. So if you could, it's just like having the vegetarian hot dogs. If someone's coming in there and they're vegetarian or vegan, why would you want to turn them away? You know what I mean. So correct. Same thing. It doesn't right. take that much effort. You know. Right. So um, I'm just gonna like rapid fire a few questions. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Favorite local venue to play at. These um, are these are my questions. Local, these are not preventable okay. questions. These okay. are my questions. Favorite local venue to play at. Uh, it could I be would, like current or like in the past. I would say the pageant. Yeah, because it has everything you need. Yeah. It's got a good vibe in there, and there's nothing. It has everything you need. Yeah. The dressing rooms are great. Mm. The stage is great. The sound is good on stage. Oh. Loading all the equipment in is easy. There's bus parking. Um, So, yeah, it has everything I need. And and we've done a million shows there. But, yes, it's – I walk in there, and I don't have to worry too much about anything. So, yeah, it's nice. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your favorite song of yours to sing? Um, there's a song called Sweetest Enemy. That's the Steve Ewing band. That's, mm-hmm. I wrote that one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I would play it all the time. I really like playing it. You like playing it. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to ask you what your least favorite song to sing um, of yours, because I'm sure you will have one, but I'm not going to ask what that is. Um, what's the most requested song that people ask you? Is um, it hectic, or is it? Probably going to the liquor store. Oh, okay. Believe it or not, it's going to the liquor <laughs> store. And. That's- could and that be the it, podcast title? It, 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 <laughs> I'm it, kidding. I'm kidding. Oh I'm kidding. Gosh. I'm kidding. And I know that if we don't play it, oh. people will be angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, why didn't you play there? I'm like, oh, we're going to play it. Don't worry about it. We'll yeah. play it. Yeah. yeah. How many times have you played Point Fest? Do you That's know? a good question. I can, I think, seven or eight times. I'm not sure. Point Fest was my first concert I know you can look ever. it up, but I think it's I'm like sure seven or eight times. Yeah. Seven or eight times. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, last question I have for you is like, what is your walk-up song? You know the like song in your brain that's yeah. like when you need to like psych yourself up? What's your walk-up song? Okay. So I don't know the name of it, but it's in the um, Kill Bill movie, the oh. second one. Okay. Uh, where they're, where the, they're walking down the uh, just before the big fight scene. Okay, okay. Uh, RZA did it. And I can't remember the name of the song. It's just an instrumental, but that's my walk-up song. Okay, awesome. I'll have to, I'll have to get that for you because okay. it's like, it should be everybody's walk it's, Okay, I need to, like, now I need to go and, like, yeah. listen to it because I am curious. It's so. just got that beat. It's just got the... You've heard it a million times. I'm sure you have. Okay. All right. You've heard it here first, but, I mean, maybe we'll all adopt it as our walk-up song. That's the walk-up jam. Thank you so much for being here. I am just really appreciative of you You taking your time. I know you're a very, very busy man. Uh, If you like what you heard, please consider rating, reviewing, and subscribing to The Preventable. It means a ton when you actually give us a review or subscribe because it shows that you're out there actually listening. Thank you very much, Steve. You got it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by PreventEd. PreventEd works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.